Good evening, everyone, and very warm welcome to all of you for this Meaningful Monday. So John Maxwell, if anyone doesn't know who he is, um, he's the author of the book that I'm going to just delve a little bit into tonight or talk a little bit about leadership tonight. Uh, John Maxwell is the world's number one leadership author and speaker, and he's written over 100 books. And uh, his best-selling book on leadership has outsold all leadership books in the world combined. So if you can work that out, you'll understand why he's called the, the guru. He obviously writes on other subjects um, besides just leadership. But if you understand what leadership really is, it could cover almost any topic under the personal development banner. And as I was saying, he's been the greatest blessing in my life and a huge influence. And the John Maxwell team, for anyone who doesn't know about it, it's actually a team that when I joined, we were 3,000 members worldwide, only 3,000. The first event I went to, we were only 750 people. Today, which is like almost 10 years later, there's over 40,000 people, 40,000 in the world that are all doing um, something to add value to others because it's really all about adding value. All right, so I'm going to talk about leadership tonight. If anyone has any questions or wants to share anything at all, please jump on the chat box type something in there or a question or unmute your microphones and feel free to ask me if there is any noise in the background i might just um mute your microphones but quite now it's very quiet and everyone's very quiet on their side so thank you very much or you've muted your own mics already mm. um if you don't mind glenn i'm just going to either <clears throat> if you can move that moving fan off your video or i can put your video off and um, it's just that it is distracting it looks like a flashing strobe light. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Appreciate that. All right. So before I begin, I'd like you to just take, even if it's 10 seconds, and think about your own personal life. What are your goals? Do you know what they are? Are you clear on your goals? Do you have dreams? Are they small dreams, big dreams? What are your ambitions? What, where do you want to go in life? What is it that you want to be or accomplish? <clears throat> I'd like you to think about that and bring something to mind, whatever it is, something that's quite clear for you. And if you don't know the answer to this question, I encourage you to work this out because the starting point of all achievement is clarity. So think about what are your goals, dreams and ambitions? It's a really important question. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jacob, and welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. You're dialing in from a uh, born and raised in New York, currently living in Manhattan, all the way from Manhattan. Thank you, Jacob. And um, right, maybe where you heard about Meaningful Monday, because you're on the other side of the world right now, and it's very really nice of you to join. Okay, so thinking about <clears throat> your dreams, your goals, dreams, and ambitions. If you think about yourself in your own life and what you really, really want to achieve, then this quote is really important for you. If you want to do, be, or have more, you have to become more. It really is about the person that we become. And that's everything from your character to the way you think, to your relationships with people, to your ability to influence others, to the way that you prioritize, to the way that you can affect change, or if you can't affect change, I'm just going to mute a mic there. Um, so think about that. If you want to do, be, or have more, you have to become more. So I'm going to talk about becoming more because becoming more leadership is, for me, the ultimate focus on the way that we talk, think and behave. Okay. And I'm going to cover these three areas tonight. One, why should I grow as a leader? Some people say leadership not for me. I work on my own. I'm just a, a plumber or I'm an accountant. I don't have any employees or um, I'm a housewife or I'm a mother or I'm a grandmother. Um, I don't, I might have managed at work. This has got nothing to do with leading subordinates. I'm just going to put your mics on mute. You can unmute them anytime. But I'll talk about it. So why should I grow as a leader? 
<clears throat> is it even important for me to grow as a leader? The next thing I'm going to cover off is what is actually the true measure of leadership? Um, you know, some people think that leadership means that you've got a whole lot of followers and maybe you are a manager. It's not that at all. Um, and the third thing is how can I grow as a leader? So if you wanted to develop your leadership and you felt that it was important after understanding number one, then what do you actually do and how do you go about it? And is it something that you can just quickly go ahead and attend a course on and walk out the door? No, it's not. You obviously know that already. So let me talk about this in a bit more detail. So first of all, what is leadership? So leadership is really about people. Let's just say, if you didn't know if a perfect definition, it's to do with people. And leadership is for people. And leadership is one and one thing only. Yes, it's many things, but the thing that it actually means is influence. So John Maxwell wrote um, a book called The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And I'm going to refer to some of these laws. And a law means it applies to everybody, anywhere, all the time. If it's not a law, it means it's just something that could apply to one person, another person, not everyone. But a law applies to everyone and they don't deviate. They remain consistent and they're timeless. So one of the laws of leadership is that leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. It's our ability to influence others. That's really what leadership is. So being a great leader is all about being hopefully a positive influence. I didn't have to put positive there, but I just chose to put positive in there because some people like Hitler were very powerful leaders, but they weren't positive, right? They did very negative things and um, destructive things. It doesn't take away the fact that Hitler was a powerful leader. We've got to understand that it still is leadership. The ability to influence millions and millions of people, whether you behave in a good way or in a um, catastrophic way, is not what I'm discussing. I'm discussing the principle. But here tonight, my values and my character and who I am and who I've been influenced by in my life is all positive. That's what I do for a living. I try to affect positive change in other people's lives and help them do that, of course, in my own as well. So I'm going to talk about being a leader, about, you know, positive influence and making this world a better place. You know, that's wonderful saying of Gandhi, which is um, be the change you want to see in the world. What it really is about starting with ourselves and what can I do if I want to make this world a better place? Not what they can do, not what government can do, not what big business can do, because if we're going to sit around and wait for all of that to happen, I think we're probably going to die one day thinking, I wish it happened and it probably doesn't happen. But it's us, it's ourselves. And just if we forget about focusing on outside and just focusing within, it's actually the most rewarding and purposeful and meaningful life that you can have is when you choose to become the positive influence in your world. Don't worry about the world because that's huge and that makes us look really small. But just become the positive influence in your world, in your home. Be the best positive influence possible in your friendship circle, in your work environment. Let it be you, because if it's you, that's, that's leadership. That's leadership. It's about adding value to others. And through that, we are more of a positive influence on others. And our ability to influence others just grows and grows and grows. Now, we're not saying we're influencing people in um, a funny kind of manipulating way or cunning way. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you thinking your life anyone who's really added value to you how much you really are drawn to them i know that people like i've had bosses in my life when i was in corporate who really used to help me grow feedback you know on how i was doing encourage me and motivate me and how they made a difference in my life and you know there were Back then, I would walk over red hot coals for them. I would do anything. And that's because of the value they added to me. And that's kind of what I'm talking about when I say a positive influence, um, which is what leadership really is. So leadership really starts with leadership of self. I really want to make that a big point. And if anyone's making notes, just write that thing down. Because sometimes we think leadership is how, how do I influence everyone around there? 
and it's actually not the place to start developing our ability to be um, a great influence by trying to do it on other people. The first person you need to learn to lead is yourself. And I have to tell you, the hardest person, the most difficult person to lead is ourselves. We know it's much easier to tell someone else, you know, get up every morning, do 50 sit-ups. I want you to tell, check in with me and tell me that you've done it. It's easier to do that than to do it yourself. It's easier to do, tell anyone to do something than to do it ourselves. Um, so leadership starts with self. And if you think of leadership, we talk about it as a compass. And if north, south, east, and west, if north is your boss or someone who maybe you work for yourself, um, but this someone else it could be god it could be god for you it could be some higher anything a higher influence than yourself if it's at work it's your boss south or people poor to you if you're a parent it's your children um if you work for yourself it's people that you influence whether that you know wh whoever that may be and east and west are people on like colleagues or equivalent or peers or friends on the side of you and the center of the compass is ourself so it's easiest to lead down. If you're the boss of people or you're a parent over children, that's called positional leadership and people have to listen to you. So that's actually the lowest form of leadership. So I want to make that quite clear because some people think, oh, I'm, I'm a leader because I've been promoted to this leadership position. That's a management role. That's a title. Leadership's got nothing to do with titles. It's got nothing to do with position. If you, if you think it does, I'm here to tell you it's not about that at all. It's about your ability to influence people. So down, parent to child, boss to subordinates is the lowest level of leadership. They have to listen to you. It's a kind of hierarchical structure. So the level that's more difficult to influence would be your peers. Um, if you can influence them, you're already there. If you're a positive influence, even better. Well done. If you can influence up, so you can influence people above you or like um, your boss, if it's a boss at work, um, your parents, if you, if you have your parents around, or anyone in a more um, senior position to you or someone that influences you, then you've got even stronger leadership ability to influence up. So if anyone does work in a role where you do have a manager at work, think about your ability to lead up as well and how successful you are and do you make any input there do you often communicate in, in that way but the most difficult one to lead is the center of that compass it's us it's ourselves to lead ourselves is the most difficult thing and this is why i wanted to do a meaningful monday on leadership tonight because your greatest personal development journey is to understand how you can become a better person and through you focusing on yourself, becoming a better person, how you will, with intention, naturally become a better leader. So talent doesn't necessarily equal success. Talent will help, but something else is needed. I don't have to tell you this. You know people who have got a lot of talent and they're just not successful. You also probably know a lot of people who have got hardly any talent, maybe not even an education that's um, as much as someone else and they really are successful because it's not about talent so much so John Maxwell even wrote a book called talent is never enough I've got another book that I read called talent is overrated a different author but look what it says here more than 50 percent of all CEOs of fortune 500 companies had C averages in college more than 50 percent that's more than half of the people running the biggest companies in the world were not the top students. And more than half the millionaire entrepreneurs never finished college. They didn't have a secondary education. Just those two statistics coming out of this book are enough to explain it's got nothing to do with your talent and your education. Success has got to do with something else. So our beliefs around why people are successful need to be re-examined. And if you don't have a good education, potentially, or they have a good, good grades, don't worry about that. Because that's not actually the way that you become successful. It doesn't mean much at all. 
it's about leadership okay if we want to be successful we need to develop leadership talent is given but we need to earn success and this is a quote that sums up everything to do with leadership everything and everything in the world absolutely everything rises and falls on leadership so i want you to think about a small zone a family a beautiful happy functional family has got great leadership a dysfunctional family with a lot of drama and stress and chaos has got poor leadership branch it out you go to a company a great company that's thriving great leadership a company that's going down the drain poor leadership go bigger the state or a country a country well run leadership a country in chaos poorly run poor leadership everything rises and falls on leadership absolutely everything and we know that because very often uh, when they mergers and takeovers if a company takes over another company that's not doing very well the first thing they generally do is fire the ceo and they put someone else in there why do they fire that person why don't they fire all the low level people because that's actually the problem that leadership influence flows downward of course there's some upward um, influence as well but the flow down is really where the power of leadership um, gets like affected most okay so why should i grow as a leader i'm just going to share this is one of the laws so it applies to everybody as i said a law applies to everybody all the time anywhere in the world timeless there's something called the law of the lid so why should i grow as a leader I'd like you just to maybe, um, I'm going to just quickly stop the share and look at my, if you can just look at me for a second, if you can all see my hand here, can you can all see my hand? Yep. If this is what I call my leadership lid, and when I say lid, let's just say that my leadership ability is a five out of 10. Well, we're going to call that my leadership lid. My ability to lead is a rating, let's say from one to 10. If it's a five out of 10, my results my success cannot go higher than a five out of ten so your leadership ability caps your potential you can have a lot of potential in fact you do you all have unlimited potential this is proven by Abraham Maslow but we cannot do more than our leadership ability and then I'll tell you a second thing if you have a, a boss for people who are in the workplace and the boss's leadership lid is a five out of 10, if that boss employs the entire team, the best in the world, and every one of them, their potential and ability is a nine out of 10, 10 out of 10, they're the best, best people in the industry. You put nine out of 10 people underneath a boss who's a five out of 10, what happens? The team cannot perform higher than a five out of 10 because the leadership lid of the leader caps the ability to perform of every single person under that lid. And if any one of you have worked in corporate under a bad boss, you know what I'm talking about. I don't have to explain this point any further. And you know, by the same token, if you've got a boss whose leadership lid, so in other words, your results can't go higher than that lid if you want to be a six seven eight out of ten in success you need to raise that lid and then your success will go up and by the same token if you are only a five out of ten and you work for a boss who's a nine out of ten you know you'll develop and grow and have opportunities and you'll be inspired at work you'll be enthusiastic you'll actually enjoy going to work you'll love what you're doing you'll love the boss because as a nine out of 10 leader, if they've got a five out of 10 in their team, they will see the potential in you and they will see more in you than you already are. And they will just want to grow and develop you. So I'm going to go back to the presentation because I've explained the thing with my hands and we can carry on. Okay. So to answer the question, why should I grow as a leader? This is the answer. 
How well you lead determines how successful you are. The end. And that's in any area. You don't have to be working for a boss. You don't have to be in a company. You can be a parent. You can be a retired person. You can be a grandparent. You can be a school, a school child. You can be a husband. You can be a wife, a girlfriend, a boyfriend. Anything. How well you lead determines how successful you are. So I just want to show you about leadership's ability, how it determines a person's level of effectiveness. So let's say a person is highly skilled. They're very effective. Let's look at the left chart here. Let's say they've got technical ability, whatever that is. Maybe they're a 10 out of 10. Well, if you've got effectiveness 10 out of 10, but you've got no leadership ability, that's all that you are. This is success without leadership. On the right-hand side, if you were still a 10 out of 10 in effectiveness, so your talents and skills in an area are really good, no matter what you are, you can be a great accountant, plumber, parent, whatever it may be. If you've got leadership ability, just look how exponentially your effectiveness increases every step of leadership ability that you increase. It's exponential. So the difference between in these two people is vast the success rate of these two people is vast the gap is massive and that gap is not how well you do your thing it's your leadership ability so neglect of leadership and not focusing on if someone's a good or bad leader especially in the workplace is a massive problem out there in companies today and this problem just self-perpetuates itself so Let's think about how most people get leadership positions. They often get leadership positions because of their technical ability. I'll give you an example. I was in sales in the last role that I was in, in, leadership, in business development. And not, when, not, when I, not in my role, but when I first joined the company, they took the best salesperson, promoted them to become sales manager. In the accounting team, they had about four or five staff. Someone left who's senior. They would look at the best accountant in the team and promote them to become the accountant. Well, technical ability is totally different to leadership. Leadership is a completely different skill set. So what happens when they choose people this way is they lose the good technical person and they get, gain a bad leader. Now everyone's unhappy. The team's unhappy, they got a bad boss. The boss themselves who got promoted is unhappy. <coughs> Because they find it really stressful, difficult, and not a pleasure at all to lead a team because they don't have any leadership ability. They've got no influence for these people. And every day, they feel like they're bumping their head. I don't know if anyone's ever had that experience. If you have, please type it in the chat box. If you, I can speak about myself. In my younger days, I'm not as young as I look. Maybe I look young. But in my 20s, I can tell you, when I was first promoted into, I was in catering back then, I had 22 staff. I was like 21 years of age and everyone in the, who worked there was definitely twice my age or more. I had no influence. It was the most stressful and difficult period um, in my career because people just don't listen to you. They might listen to you for the first week or two because you're now the, the, the new boss. They want to see what you're about. But once they get to know you, if you don't have leadership ability, they don't really give two hoots. You just lose your ability to manage that team and have a cohesive, successful team. You're not effective. Things go wrong. Things falling, wheels are coming off. And that's because leadership is a very different skill set. Now, the achievement, as I said, of a talented team, with that law of the lid with my hands, the achievements of a talented team will never rise beyond the leadership lid of the leader. It has never happened. It's a law. It will never happen. It will never happen in all of history. It's never going to happen. You can only achieve any company, any team to the level of that leader. So business ability of a whole company even does not rise above the leadership ability of the leader. So I think all of you, once you've heard this, you're going to go around with your eyes looking at things in a little bit of a different way. And I hope you do. 
and have a look at anything, a coffee shop, a restaurant, where you take your dry cleaning, where you go to your vet, anywhere that you are operating, a Coles, a Woolworths, anything, an IGA, anywhere that you go, the company where you work, the department, your department, another one, a family, another family, relatives, friends, look at everybody and everything around you and think about that. No effectiveness of a team or business drives, is higher than the leadership level of that leader. Now, when we talk about leadership lid, I'm not talking about limited potential. It's not the same thing. As I said, your potential is unlimited, and this is proven by Abram Maslow decades ago. So I'm going to talk about this light. This light is the best analogy you can ever get to understand leadership. That lamp is you. And that lamp can plug into the wall socket of 240 volts or whatever it is. But the electricity from the power station is unlimited. However, you put in a 20 watt globe in that lamp and you're going to get a really dim light. Well, your leadership ability is the same as the globe. And you know that some people are really dim and some people are a little bit brighter. So you take out that 20 watt globe and you put in an 80 watt or 100 watt globe, you switch on that lamp and boy, does it shine bright. It shines so bright, it lights up a whole room. That's leadership ability. So when you think about yourself, if you want more potential to flow through you, like more current and electricity to flow through that lamp, you need to change that light bulb or change your leadership ability. And the minute you change your leadership ability, more potential can flow through you. And you do have unlimited potential. You won't know how much potential you have until you start to develop it. I'm telling you this from experience. I had already had about 20 years experience in corporate in most of my life management roles. So I had teams and I was managing teams, small ones, big ones at one stage. In retail, I had 75 people, 20, then four, different amounts, okay? Sometimes I worked on my own, but I had 20 years experience. But I can tell you, when I started to really study leadership and get involved with books that written by John Maxwell and, and took it as mentorship in my life through John Maxwell, I can tell you that my life changed so significantly and my ability to um, influence people and really stand out in every way happened when I also focused on developing myself. Remember the self-leadership I spoke about in the beginning and how you develop yourself. And I'm talking about how do we become a person of greater influence and a positive influence? How do we prioritize better? How do we affect change better? How do we become a person of better character? How do we cast vision well? How do we share our vision in such a way that people are actually inspired? Um, how do we change culture everywhere, in our home, at work, um, things like that? Um, how do we solve problems? Solving problems is actually a, a leadership skill. So all of these things, there are ways to actually learn them. And only when it happened to me could I see how much potential was inside me, but just untapped. And I love the subject of leadership and I love to train and teach it because I see it in people. Um, in a mastermind I ran the last time we did this book, it was quite a while now, but there was a guy who was a, a, a teacher and I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying this. He came to the mastermind because he felt his, in, his career had stagnated and he knew that he had more potential. He was only in the mastermind for about four weeks. Do you know how much had changed in his career in just those four weeks with his awareness changing so much on leadership? And by the time we were like, even before the mastermind ended, he'd already been given a role which he wanted as a um, deputy principal in a certain role where you improve like um, culture and things like that in the school. It wasn't actually just being a teacher. So he got and he manifested what he wanted and he sh stood out just by the input that he gave and his ability to add value when he was learning things and how he was changing his day-to-day -day behaviors just a little bit every day, more and more. So it is true, more potential can flow through you and like that lamp there, your light can shine way, way brighter if you allow it 
to do so by just developing more of that skill. So your leadership ability right now is literally the lid on your own potential, and that is affecting your current results. So when we look at that effectiveness again, if this red line was a leadership lid, then your results can only go, let's say, a 4 out of 10 maximum, a 5 out of 10 if your lid is at a 5. But your potential goes on and on and on. It doesn't actually end. So really, the effectiveness of any person as an individual or any organization depends on the strength of the leadership. So as a quote, I'm only as successful as my ability to lead. And why is that? Because every single interaction with another human being is an attempt to influence them. If you think about parents having small children, how they are talking all the time, please don't put your finger in that. Please, you know, stand back from the road. Don't smack your brother or sister. We always, or can you please do this or do that, whatever it may be. And sometimes it's successful and sometimes it's really just not. And they just don't listen. So if you ever give kids and you find them difficult to uh, influence, that's leadership. You know, if you've got friends and you want to go and do this and then you'll find that one out of the group of five of you as friends always gets the group to go and do what they want, but someone else never gets the group to get what they want. That's again, that is just leadership. So we're always influencing people. doesn't matter what role we're in. We could be a family. We could be a person at work. It doesn't matter. Um, and then Jacob writes here, the I, the me, the self, the thinker, the mind is the block. Agreed. It, it definitely is the block but we can change everything through awareness. So here are some important aspects. You cannot lead any more people than your ability to influence. So if you can only influence two or three people, you can only lead two or three people. If you want to lead a bigger team or an organization to greater success, you need the ability to influence more people. And the higher you want to climb, the more you need leadership. And I have to add, it doesn't matter if you work for yourself or you work in a company with people. Your success still depends on your ability to lead and to influence others. The greater impact you want to make, the greater your influence needs to be. And that's any influence, influence in this world, a positive influence to make this world a better place. You need influence. So to be successful, we need to lead. And to lead, we need influence. So the good news, guys, the great news, in fact, is that leadership is a learnable skill. Anybody can improve their leadership. So the ability to influence comes from one and one thing only. The result of adding value to people. So if you look at it in a flow, Anyone can learn to add value to people. All you need to do is know how to and have an intention. Well, if that's true, then anyone can learn to influence more people. And well, if that's true, then influencing more people can give you a greater leadership lid. So it's quite simple. We can all become really good. And just to also emphasize that the classic error to think that influence is about your position, especially if you're working um, like in the workplace, you think it's about your vision. It's really not. You know, I when I was younger, I made the big mistake myself of assuming because I had the position, I was the leader. I told you about the story when I was in catering in my early 20s. Not just then, even in other roles when I was 25 or 30. If I was promoted into a role and I got that title, that position, I thought, okay, I'm now the leader. Big mistake. It was a classic error. I didn't have any influence. I didn't have any influence until I actually changed my focus. And this is it. I was focusing on myself. How am I doing? Am I getting results? What are, what are they? Do they like me? Um, uh, it's not about that. When I changed my focus to them and said, you know what? Every day, how are you? I care about you. How are you? What can I do for you? Not what can you do for me that I'm the leader. What problems are you facing? How can I help you succeed? Even if you ask your children this, you'll find you have more influence with them. Try it. You know, I thought it was all about me. I thought it was all about how much I knew if that would give me the title or the position. But you know what the truth is, as hard as it 
may sound people aren't really interested in what you know is a saying people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care and it really is about that leadership is about people valuing people and adding value to people so to be successful we need to develop a leadership lid the 80 20 principle applies just like that you just change your leadership a little bit just by 20 percent you'll find 80 percent of your results start to change massively it's like an exponential catalyst to change immediately your results become better as your results become better you become more successful and so it goes you can just develop more of your lid and you can just grow and grow and really become a more and more positive influence so, okay, so how do you raise your leadership lid? Well, the first one is an intention to do so. You recognize the importance of leadership. You see it as a learnable skill, which it absolutely is. You develop that skill. Don't rely on leadership training at work ever. Develop yourself as a leader. And I recommend a person does this ongoing all the time in some small way. Even if you just read a chapter every week or two, on leadership but you never stop developing yourself as a leader or watch videos on it or john maxwell videos on youtube anything and the leader's role is delivering results through others no matter what that is so if you want to actually raise a leadership lid and you want to grow it starts with awareness and a willingness so this is us we are all in our comfort zone right now outside your comfort zone is what you call your growth zone so when people think about developing the leadership ability, you don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to go to a special place or a university or a course. I mean, your circumstances right now in your life are the best curriculum for your growth. Think about all the challenges you have in your life right now. Every single one of those challenges, I'm sure, are opportunities for you to actually get out of your comfort zone, into your growth zone, and with awareness and willingness, start to raise your leadership lid. So I love life because when life becomes a little bit rough with me, I realize it's me that's a little bit too close to my comfort zone. And it's time I did a bit of personal growth in some area. And when I step out of my comfort zone, I get into my growth zone. Yes, it might be uncomfortable, but I'm learning and I'm stretching. I find that I start to become better at the areas where I've got a bit of struggle. And it's like that with everything. I want to show you this video. I'm just going to get the sound up for you. Just hold on a second. This is a video of one man. If you think that influence is, um, you know, I can't change the world or I don't have a team or... Watch this video. Some of you might have heard of this guy before. This is one man's influence. He cleared 9,000 tons of trash from the Mumbai beaches. Please just watch how inspiring this is. And this is what I love about this idea of you being a positive change. Every one of us and the difference we can make. We are in for a long haul. And every citizen on this planet must be in for a long haul. Start doing your bit what we are doing. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I absolutely love that story because it's one man and he just had this passion and mission to do something positive. And it just goes to show what the influence of one person can do. And there are many stories like this. The man who started, sorry, who started charity water, things like that. So the point I want to make is anyone, any one of us sitting here can make a huge positive difference. Gary, something called the language of the lid. It means if you ever hear these particular verbatims, you know that there's a problem with your leadership lid. So this is opportunities to help you or to help those around you um, develop capacity. So when people say I'm too busy, I can't, I don't have enough time to get through anything. There's no such thing as too busy. Capacity is determined by leadership. So if you ever heard these verbatims, I'm maxed out, I'm stuck. I'm stressed. No matter what I do, it's never enough. Or there are not enough hours in the day. I'm yet to tell you there are 24 hours in a day and everyone's got them. So it's not about how many hours there are in the day. It's how effective we are in those hours in the day. 
the last one i've taken this as far as it can go well just a quick story if anyone knows the story of um mcdonald's for example it wasn't the mcdonald's brothers that made it the worldwide chain that it was they tried to franchise it they had no leadership ability they didn't succeed and the man who sold them the ice cream uh, or the milkshake maker named ray Kroc, he did have leadership ability and vision and he's the man who took it to becoming like over 33,000 of sites around the world so it's not really about the brand if you like it or not it's just an example that the mcdonald's brothers themselves didn't have leadership ability someone else did and that's how the chain spread across the world um Yep, and also um, Jacob writes, a person with a brain that is totally free from fear is unstoppable. Yep, and it's not really about being free of fear. It's about acting even if you do have fear as well, because sometimes fear is natural if we're changing or something is changing or we're changing or something or there's change in our world. If it's significant, it can cause that natural uh, fear, but it's that you conquer fear. So yes, it is about being unstoppable when you conquer fear. So what is the true measure of leadership? Well, it's not title or position, it's influence. If you think of these people, they did not have titles. They really didn't. They just added value to people and it was through their adding of value. They had enormous, enormous influence. Any one of them, you can think for yourselves. I'm sure you know these stories. So I love this quote by Margaret Thatch. It's a bit funny. It says, being in power is like being a lady. If you have to tell people you are, you're not. <laughs> so it's the same with leadership you've got to tell people you're the leader then you actually the leader you know i'm the boss around here and you need to listen to me that's not leadership that's um, i don't know management or power so people don't really care how much you know until they know how much you care years uh years and years ago when i was in my early days after being in catering i worked in retail in south africa for a chain called pick and pay if anyone knows a hypermarket there aren't many in australia there's i think one or two maybe in the whole country but I worked for hypermarkets, massive stores, they're huge, and uh, lots of staff, hundreds. We had about 300 to 500 staff in one hypermarket. While I worked there, and that's where I learned that I had no leadership ability. I used to go around, you know, if I ever had the thought in my head as the boss of a department or something, you know, what have you done for me? I was really not going to get very far, and it was just painful, and I bumped my head. But when I really stepped into the shoes of my people and said, you know, how can I help you grow? What can I do for you? How can I make you more successful? Is there anything that you're struggling with that I can help you with so that you can be more successful in your role? Are you getting all the support you need from me? Once I changed and focused on people, my success took off, my influence took off, and it's like night and day. So really, when you think about leadership, what is it? It's really about people and for people in any way, shape, or form. And Zig Ziglar sums it up nicely when he says, you can have what you want, if you help enough other people get what they want it is so true so quickly some five myths of influence the first one is the management myth that you got to be in that management title or position to be the one to influence people that's not true you can have all the titles in the world if you don't know how to influence people it ain't going to work for you and um, you just have to um, either experience it yourself or know someone who's really struggling in their role with the team because they are the manager but they're not a leader so management is about you know, controls and status quo and measurement and management and um, costs and deadlines and things. Leadership is about inspiration. It's about encouragement. It's about um, influence. Very, very different to what management is. The next one is the entrepreneur myth that just because someone is an entrepreneur, that they actually a good leader. Not necessarily. Um, you might find a gap in the market and go after it successfully. But if you try to take that and expand and grow nationally or internationally, you ain't going to do it if you don't have good leadership. And knowledge myth, that knowledge is power. So if I have all the knowledge, I have power. No, leadership is not power, my friends. It's not about power. We're not here to power up against anyone or, you know, it's influence, positive influence, I always say. And the pioneer myth, that someone who got out there, who's first in front, who's a pioneer, the trailblazer, that they're the leader, again not necessarily you might have gone first towards something but to be sustainable long term and grow over time bigger and better it's not about being the pioneer it's about being a person who's a great leader and can take um, followers and people with you to support you and carry that vision 
And then we spoke about the position myth. It's not about position or titles. If you ever say, or if you ever hear someone say, I wish they'd just give me the position so I can get the job going. Well, that won't change anything for you because if they're not listening to you now, I don't know how much they can listen to you when you actually do get the position or if not you, someone else. I'm just making an example. I don't mean actually you, just the way I'm saying it. So leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And the more effective you want to be, the more influence you need. So our attitude is a really good example. If you think about it, why is right attitude important? So attitude is one of the chapters in the book, Developing the Leader Within You. It's a, and it's a brilliant chapter, one of my favorite chapters. Why? Because attitude is a choice. Attitude determines our approach to life. Attitude determines our relationships with people. Good relationships, bad relationships. Attitude plays a huge role. Also, attitude is the only difference, the only, only difference between successful people and people who fail. Also, at the beginning of a task, if a person's got a good attitude, you're probably going to get a good outcome. Negative attitude, probably not such a good outcome. And also attitude is the way you turn problems into opportunities. It's the way you view things, the way you see the world, your perspective. And attitude can give us an uncommon positive perspective, which is really, really helpful in our lives. Um, and then attitude is contagious. And if you're positive, encouraging and open, your people will be too. So the language of lack of influence is I've tried to make changes, but I just don't seem to have a voice. That's an opportunity to develop your leadership. Or I keep saying the same thing over and over, but no one's listening. Or give me the title, give me the position. So just something really helpful. I love this and it will help anyone become a better leader just like that is before people are interested in following a leader, there are three questions that need to be answered in their mind. They won't say this out loud. This is in their mind. But every single person ask these questions if they're ever going to follow someone else. Do you care for me? Can you help me? And can I trust you? And if you just look at the, those questions and think about them deeply for a little bit, you realize how important character is and integrity and being a dependable person and someone who you, people can rely on and trust and who's consistent in that way. If you want to have influence with people, your character is hugely, hugely important. Character is another chapter in developing the leader within you, just to share. Um, then how can I grow as a leader? Well, the leaders develop daily. A little bit, a little bit every day. They don't develop in a day. That's why in my time as a leadership trainer, I've had companies ask me to come in many times and do a two day workshop, a four day workshop, whatever it may be. And I decline. I say, I'll help your company. But the only way I'll help your company is if I do a mastermind, whether that's five weeks, six weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, whatever it is, a mastermind, because I want a longitudinal process with the people to allow change to get integrated or learning and awareness to get integrated and applied so that people can actually experience the change and get that feedback as we move on to the next thing, integrate that and we move on to the next thing. Because as you do it over a process, you find you actually grow and develop significantly. But if you go to a two day workshop, you can pump them full of leadership information. But when they go back to their desks within a week, did you know that 98% of the old behaviors stick and 2% change? And many of that don't even stay as lasting change. So it's developing daily over the long term. And leadership is a learnable skill. It evolves over time. It's a process like any skill. If you think about playing tennis, you can't go for a two day workshop and come out a great tennis player. You've got to go for tennis lessons every week or consistently for years. The same with meditation. Meditation is a skill. If you don't think it's a skill, it is definitely a skill. And from my own life, if I think of the years I've been meditating, even doing the Pashna, which is 10 days, silent meditation, everything helps every day. 
that you meditate, even if it's for just 10 minutes, compounds over time. There's a compounding effect. And whether that's public speaking, you can't do a two day course or a four day course or even a 10 day course in public speaking, come out a great public speaker. Yes, you can be much better and have a lot of awareness. But to really become a great public speaker, you need to evolve over the long term in a process. That's the best way to learn. So commitment takes time. I mean, it takes time, it takes commitment and investment in yourself. So if I want to be motivated, this is what John Maxwell says, if I want to be motivated, I attend an event. But if I want to grow, I engage in a process. And then if process takes time, I'd say start now. So never underestimate the compounding effect of consistency, especially if you've got big goals, dreams, and ambitions. Don't expect this massive success overnight. Don't. Just focus on every day becoming a little bit better. You know, if you only, only became 1% better in, in a week, just 1% better in a week, but you did that with consistency, you'd be 50% better in a year. You'd be 100% better in two years. That's serious change. And that's really where it, it does work. So my favorite thing is to remember and remind myself, never underestimate the compounding effect of consistency. And really, success occurs when opportunity meets preparation. If your opportunity arises right now, tomorrow, some big opportunity for you, even if it's a opportunity to lead up a whole division or something or a company, it's too late to prepare then. We need to be prepared. And then whatever opportunity comes, we can take the opportunity. Um, okay, and then how well you lead determines how successful you are. Just a reminder that everything rises and falls on leadership. So the key takeouts for tonight are leadership is a learnable skill. Leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And leadership ability determines success. And everyone can improve that. And really, a person's personal success comes down to leadership. So I'm sharing this because I've got an opportunity to run a mastermind if anybody wants to jump in and join. Um, it is this what I call an orderly process of growth. Because your leadership ability does have to develop through a process. And we are doing, um, I'm doing a mastermind next year, starting at the end of January, just before February begins. On this amazing book, Developing the Leader Within You by John Maxwell. I've run this mastermind many times before. And I can tell you, even though I had already been with the John Maxwell team for about seven years and read the 21 Laws of Leadership definitely more than 20 times. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that I did. Um, when I read this book, it's a fantastic book, cut into 10 easy to understand chapters that are extremely powerful, very applicable, and easy to understand. So just a couple of the chapters are things like influence. That's one of the chapters. Another one is priorities. Just understanding that activity is not necessarily accomplishment. And if we're going to do activity, which we do every day, how much are you actually accomplishing and how much of that is driving your personal success? Well, that comes down how you prioritize. So what does prioritizing actually mean? How do you do it? How do you get criteria to know how to prioritize? And once you've done your priorities, how do you actually stick to that and grow by applying your discipline of working on your priorities in a certain order? There's something else required. So how do we, measure ourselves every single day just a little bit but through that improve and improve and improve as time goes by and um, another chapter is character i spoke about that it's everything it really is who you are becomes your success in your life and then creating positive change is a chapter um solving problems is a chapter vision so there's several there um there's 10 chapters in this book so it's over five weeks it's about one and a half hours to two hours a week where we get together and we dig deep into the book. It's not about reading the book. 
anyone can read a book. <laughs> you don't need me to read a book. Um, but the depth of learning is from each other in the mastermind where every single one of you come together to basically learn from each other and share your personal experiences and circumstances where you are and what you're trying to achieve. And as you apply the learnings week in and week out and you come back and share them, that's the way that a person really learns and exponentially so because you are acting on what you've learned. You're getting feedback on it. You're sharing it. You're also problem solving it. And that's the best way to learn. So here are a couple of testimonials. I'm not going to read them, but you can see that people definitely had um, the feeling that it enriched their life. It was um, invaluable. They learned so many lessons and they just became better people, adding value to others and, you know, continue self-improvement. So that's it from me. If anyone wants to ask me any questions, please jump on the chat or unmute your mics. Otherwise, the next meeting for Monday is next Monday. It's the first Monday of every month. Oh, sorry, not 3rd of October. Apologies, that's old. It's November. That needs to change. Um, looking at the calendar, it is the 7th of November is the first Monday. So apologies there. Let me just fix that. Whoops. Okay. That's seven November. Okay. And then as for events coming up, um, if anyone interested in doing the silver method, you have a question? Yes, please. Mm, please go my ahead. question is, is it is it so only one person can be a leader without any followers? Or the followers are less? Just repeat your question. I didn't, I can't, or get closer to your mic. I didn't quite hear you. Is it only one person without any followers can be a leader or not? Um, if you don't mind, I think your name is Beth, Bethlehem. Please type your question into the chat box. I can't quite get your question. I just heard, is it only 1%? What do you mean only 1%? Yes, Can you just repeat your question? Um, just... Is one person without any followers can be a leader? Um, I'm not too sure about the one percent, but a person doesn't a person doesn't have to have subordinates to be a leader. Every you, everyone here is a leader. Every person on the planet is a leader because everyone in their lives is every day to day, every interaction from the barista where you got to get your coffee to go and get your tires changed to go and shopping at Coles to your job to your clients to your family, your friends. Everyone is interacting with people. So every single one of us, every interaction with someone is an opportunity to influence them. So everyone's a leader. That's the first point. The second point about 1%, I said, if you only developed, I think this is what you meant, if you only developed at 1% better a week, I'm not saying it has to be one, it can be two, it can be five, but if it's only as little as 1% a week, over time, you'll be 50% better in a year, which is huge. If anyone was 50% better in a year, that's massive. That's a massive self-improvement. If it's your character, your prioritizing, your decision making, your problem solving, your ability to um, inspire people, or cast vision or whatever it may be. So I don't know if that answers your question, Bethlehem. If it doesn't, then tell me. And if it does, also tell me. So I'll make sure I answer your question. Yes, thank you. All right, great. Harrison, your hand is up. Hello, Janine. Hi. I'm just basically asking, so how many free webinars will be? So there's going to be one next week on Monday, Janine. Will there be any others? Oh, the free webinars. Yes, I've got a, so this Meaningful Monday is not every week, it's every month. Yes. Um, the first Monday of every month. Um, I do have a free webinar tomorrow night, but that's to do with the silver method. Tomorrow night, at 8 p.m., same link as tonight, is something called the four key skills to take charge of your life. And um, 
that's at 8 p.m. if you want to join that. It's on Eventbrite. So if you just go to Eventbrite, either put in my name or the four key skills to take charge of your life, it's tomorrow night. Yeah, well, thank you, Janine. You're welcome. You're welcome, Harrison. Thanks for your question. Nice. Yes, thank you. Anu. Janine, um, when is the um, early bird um, offer finishes for the mastermind? Um, I actually jump on my phone. Hold on, because I don't know. Um, I'm just quickly going to my website to sure. tell you. Mm. Okay, so it starts from the 31st of January until the end of February and The early bird ends on the 20th of December, 2022. Good. Thank you. And what day is that going to run after the five weeks for two hours? Um, so far, it looks like a Tuesday. Tuesday. If there's any major problem, we sometimes move it to a Wednesday once we've got the bookings in. But generally, it's a Tuesday. What time, Janine? Um, seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Yeah, that'll work. And that's why I Zoom we can do as well. Definitely. Zoom or in the room. Um, Victoria is sitting here. She's been in a mastermind before. And some weeks you were in the room with me, Victoria. Other times you were on Zoom. Yep, yep. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Cool. Okay, so the next silver method, um, there are only five spots left. If anybody wants to join, I think there might be um, just under that. Anyway, there's five spots left and it's in November 36, Thursday to Sunday. As a man think it is the very next mastermind starting in October. This is a phenomenal book. I uh, didn't um, cover that tonight, but there is a recorded meaningful Monday on as a man thinketh, which um, is on my YouTube channel. Or if you got my newsletter, I put it in there. If you want to know about this, this is an amazing book about understanding your thinking because everything, everything starts with how we think. And this is actually a thinking system. Um, and if you haven't heard about this book, it's written in the year 1903. That's how old it is. And 90% uh, of all personal development books in the world are based on this one book. Every single personal development book has elements of as a man thinketh in it. Um, so that's that mastermind. And then that's from the developing the leader. So that's it. Any questions from anyone, please ask. Otherwise, we're going to do a quick guided meditation. Yes, Harrison, go for it. So... All I was going to say was, let me just think pretty quickly. Now I've got it. That's right. Uh, are you okay? I can... I'm all good. I was just talking. It's all good. I was just basically thinking what I was going to say, but now I've got it. So what I was going to say was, Janine, so from my experience with handling difficult people, so somebody that has PTSD or somebody that has complex PTSD or any new logical problems with their behaviour, and you want to influence them, which is be a good leader. So good leadership role modeling. And they're difficult because they're stubborn. And I used to basically think why they're stubborn. Is it because they're just behaving that way? Because they're wired that way? And I realized it's beyond genetics. And it's basically beyond what they're feeling. It's essentially what they are uh, from my experience, what I've learned. It all comes back down to number one, the feeling of trust. And do they see your side to the story? So do they see the benefit in what you're saying? And do they have the ability to change? And also, to can they also make the decision to change? Yeah, that's absolutely true. And by the same token, we see their side of the story as well, which also helps if we can put ourselves into their shoes. Yes, people who've got, um, you know, post traumatic stress disorder or some trauma or something, they are obviously effective and their mind thinks differently. And trust, you just mentioned, is huge. By the way, in um, John Maxwell's book, yeah, not this one, his other leadership book. Trust is so important. It's called, he says, trust is the foundation of leadership, the foundation. If that's not there, forget about, it's like building a foundation of a high-rise building. Poor foundation, you're never going to get a high-rise building. So you're so right. Funda trust is absolutely the most important thing for a leader. And we know if you think about politicians who've broken trust with the people, 
they never regain it really back to what it was. And even in friendships or, or relationships, if someone breaks your trust, it's so hard, you know, to come back. So thank you for sharing that. It's so true. Yeah, that's what I've experienced, Janine. My experience is that if you don't create the sense of trusting the person from, you know, what you're telling them or what you're doing, and they don't see the benefit in what you're saying to them, they're not going to trust you. And it doesn't matter what you do, you won't change them. So it doesn't matter how stubborn someone is, if they don't value you, as, as what you've said, Janine, already, you know, it's all about how much you care until they know that you care about them, then you can change them. Yeah, you got the, the right quote out that stood out for you. People don't, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Correct. Um, Lucia or Lucia, it's, I'll just type it here. It's, if you go to Eventbrite, just Google the four key skills to take charge of your life or my name, it'll come up. And if it doesn't, text me. I'll send you the link. Here's my number. Okay. All right. Just um, there's a new planned event. If anyone here is from Perth or got any family or friends in Perth and you, you know about the Silver Method or have done the Silver Method and want to share it with them, this is a planned event for January next year. It's not final. It's planned. We're just waiting for confirmations and things before we um, confirm it all. All right. So it's now time for a guided meditation. I am going to just guide you into a relaxed state. Just follow my voice, relax, and keep a pen and paper handy in front of you because at the end of it, when you're quite relaxed, I'm going to ask you a few questions. And in your meditative state, peek your eye open and just write down your first impressions. Don't judge it, don't question it. Whatever comes to mind, any rubbish, anything, good, bad, don't worry about what you write. Whatever comes to mind, write down your first impressions. It's probably going to be wisdom and um, intuition and guidance for you from your higher self because you're in a relaxed state so just relax keep a pen and paper handy and let's begin i'll just put on some music so definitely if you haven't done this before Grab yourself a pen and paper. If you need two minutes, just let me know. But try to write the answers down that come to you because you'll probably get some really good wisdom. It's been proven that if you ask questions in a meditative state, you get different answers to asking them in a wakeful state like you are now. Oh, you found it. Um, it's too early. Um, too early. It's 8 p.m. tomorrow, Lucia. Is that a, are you in some other um, location? Or Lucia, I think. Oh, you must be in Perth. Thailand. Ah, oh, okay, Lucia. Well, it will be recorded if you need to listen to it on the YouTube channel. You can watch it when you get home. Okay. All right. So find yourself a comfortable position. Take a nice deep breath in. Gently close your eyes and just allow your body to relax. Take another slow, deep breath in. And as you exhale, just relax the top of your head. Focus on your scalp. Relax your scalp. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyes. Relax your cheeks. Relax your tongue and jaw. Relax your whole face. Continue to breathe slowly, deeply and rhythmically and relax your shoulders and your back, starting from your neck 
going all the way down to the end of your spine. And drop the tension in your shoulders, relax your arms, all the way down to your hands. Relax your chest as so you take a nice deep breath in and exhale. And take another slow deep breath in your belly and as you exhale, relax your abdomen. And relax your hips. Relax your thighs. Relax your knees. Relax your calves. All the way down to your feet. It is a wonderful feeling to be deeply relaxed. A very healthy state of being. Continue to breathe deeply, slowly and rhythmically throughout the meditation. Now I'd like you to imagine being in your ideal place of relaxation. It doesn't matter if it's a place that you've actually been to or a place that's just in your imagination, as long as it's a place that you feel totally relaxed. Imagine experience, experiencing your ideal place of relaxation now. And now I'd like you to imagine creating a beautiful waterfall of white light and putting it into the scene. Your waterfall of white light is now created. I want you to walk over and feel how wonderful it feels to stand under that waterfall of beautiful white healing energy. It's a clearing energy, a cleansing energy. And just feel how it cleans and cleanses all the clutter and tension away of not just the day or the last week or month, but of your entire lifetime. Allow that light to swirl around you, encompassing you in its glow. And as you enjoy the white light clearing your energy field, just notice how much happier you look. Feel how much lighter you feel. And now repeat mentally after me. Every day, in every way, I am getting better, better and better. Positive thoughts, images and suggestions bring me benefits I desire. I will always maintain a perfectly healthy body, mind and immune system.
Now I want you to imagine that that waterfall of white light turns to green. It's a beautiful green waterfall of unconditional love. Feel the love flow over you. Feel that beautiful green unconditional loving light wrap all around you. Allow that love to flow through every cell of your being. And just feel nourished and replenished and restored and rejuvenated and renewed from that beautiful green light of unconditional love. And now, as you step out of the waterfall, just notice how much better you feel. You've reset your mind, you've reset your body, you're feeling a wonderful sense of calmness and clarity and being centered. And you're now going to set the intention for the month ahead, this month of October. So I'd like you to keep your eyes closed. I'm going to ask you a question and your very first impressions. You may write them down. Open your eyes if you need to. And once you've finished writing down your first impressions, just quickly close your eyes again and re-enter the meditation. The first question, what do I need to focus on for the month ahead? Just write down your first impressions. And just close your eyes and re-enter the meditation and relax. The next question is, what steps do I need to take to take me closer to what I want to be, do or have? What steps do I need to take to take me closer to what I want to be, do or have? Just write down your first impressions and then re-enter the meditation. And the next question is what do I need to let go of or release?
And as you relax, the next question is, is there anything else? Is there anything else I need to know or anything else I need to do? Just is there anything else? And write down your first impressions. Okay, just take a deep breath, relax. And just have the intention to revisit your answers when you come out the meditation. And just trust them and know that they're from a higher place, probably your own intuition or your higher self. And they probably come from a place of truth for you. So take them seriously and respectfully and apply them otherwise just slowly wriggle your fingers wriggle your toes become aware of the room you're sitting in i'll count from one to three at the count of three i'll click my fingers you'll open your eyes be wide awake feeling fine in perfect health feeling better than before one two three Eyes open, wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. Is your name pronounced Lucia or Lucia? It's, it's Lucia. Lucia, are you Italian? Yes. yes. Anche io sono italiana. Ciao, come stai? No, you, you told me last, uh, last Monday. All oh, right, um, you spoke to me. Yes, I, I, I don't remember. I think uh, we just shared that. You, you said Ciao Lucia or something. <laughs> All right, okay. So you said, what if mind interfered? Yes, because um, I, I kind of wrote, uh, I was a little bit hesitant in my last answer. So I'm not sure like if the the answer was there or the mind kicked in so quickly yeah. well um your first impression is generally the right one logic can sometimes be wrong so your first impression is usually the correct and the right one that's what i can say your right brain will never lead you wrong never i know this sounds extreme but in a relaxed state, if the conscious mind is relaxed and not focused, you're more just relaxed, and a question gets asked, your first impression is often the correct and right one. Um, with logic, we can make good decisions, bad decisions, but when we go against our intuition, you might not see the mistake straight away, but in time you'll realize it was a mistake because if you go against your intuition, your intuition is always right. So we hope to get answers from our intuition, Lucia, when we're in a relaxed state. I can't promise you that every answer is, but um, we hope that it is. And I would just say, trust your inner guidance and your first impressions. And if you're unsure, you can do exactly the same we've just done, but a longer meditation. There's a free one on my website called The Silver Method Long Relax. It's 30 minutes. Hold the question, is this the right answer for me or not or ask the question write it out blah 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 what exactly it is do the whole 30 minute deep meditation and at the end write, write out the question look at it or ask it in your head and whatever answer comes is right if we aren't if we do the aunt questions and answer in the wakeful state using our logical mind 
Um, I don't want to give anybody any suggestions to follow that fully. You may or you may not, I don't know. But if, I, if you follow the answers in your meditative state, what's the alpha level when you're relaxed, I would be very confident to say your answers are true for you. That's all I can say, yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to stop the... Yep, any questions? No? Well, I'm going to stop the recording.